reason we decided to write the book was because we wanted to preserve East Hall history. During the course of our research, we found that a lot of people in town had no idea how East Hall was shaped or the events that <clears throat> made us what we are today, which I think is a pretty good town. Although no exact date is known, it is believed that Milton Settlement was in existence in 1803 and 1804. Milton contained two sawmills, a flour mill, a distillery, a tavern, a blacksmith shop, and a store with a population of about 50 people. A dam was built across the Wood River, which we know as Wood River Creek, to provide water to run the mills, which was located on each side of the river. When I was reading up on uh, history, found that the Lewis and Clark expedition papers, that uh, they mentioned people going up the river to get supplies. And then at one other point, they mentioned one of the gentlemen went up the river to get supplies and ended up getting drunk. I kind of think maybe they went to Milton Settlement. <laughs> Reverend and Mrs. Thomas Lippincott were early settlers in Milton. In 1819, she was instrumental in forming the first Sunday school. And there was about 20 children who attended. She held Sunday school in her home. A dam was provided, the, band, the dam that provided water, excuse me, brought sickness into, uh, into Milton. In 1820, Mrs. Lippincott died what was referred to as milk sickness. The um, year of sickness was pretty much the end of Milton. Survivors moved from Milton to the American Bottoms, which is East Alton, or other settlements in the area. At the beginning of the War of 1812, settlers built blockhouses or, fort or forts to, for protection against the Indians. The Beeman's Fort was built um, for protection, and it was built on what is now the U-Haul. At uh, the time of the Wood River Massacre in 1814, settlers went to Beeman's Fort, as well as other forts in the area, for protection against the hostile Indians. Railroads had a great influence on settling East Alton. In the 1830s, Alton, Shawnee Town, the Illinois, the St. Louis uh, railroads were started in Alton Junction as a transfer and stock fee point. The Irish came with the railroads and settled in the area and is responsible for the city being called Emerald and Shamrock being the main street. The railroad pe uh, people referred to East Alton as Alton Junction. The worst train back in Illinois was in 1893 at the Alton Junction. The Southwestern Limited 109 was running late going into the junction. And uh, it ran into a train, a freight train, which had oil cars and burst into a huge explosion. The residents tried to help the people on the train and 41 people lost their lives approximately 75 were injured or seriously, were seriously injured. And by the way, the uh, train wreck is also called Juan because it, that's what the locals called the junction, was Juan Junction. Um, the first police officer to lose his life in uh, the line of duty was James Weiss. In 1898, he worked both for the Alton Junction and the Big Four Railroad. He was patrolling uh, the stockyards or the train station and came upon people who were breaking into boxcars. They, he tried to arrest them, they shot him and killed him. The first church that was organized was the First, Bapt um, first Baptist Church and it was also called Juan Baptist. And it was established in 1891. Prior to its organization, Prayer and worship services were held in homes and in the one-room uh, school of Blackjack and Emerald. The church now is located on Bowman Avenue. In 1864, the first school was a log cabin, 
and it was located on Shamrock and Main. And uh, students would say their lessons aloud, so people called it a lab school. In 1870, it was replaced by the Emerald and Blackjack School, and it was uh, located where the current Washington School is. In the early 1878s, pioneers recognized the potential to establish businesses at Alton Junction. The area was rich in natural resources, and a Stoneware Pipe Company was one of the first businesses established. The um, Stoneware was destroyed in 1902 from flood. In 1870, C.B. Jove established the first driving park. That's similar to what our current harness races are. And that was located where the Illinois State offices are on West St. Louis Avenue. In 1892, Franklin Olin purchased land from Z.B. Joe. And by 1893, the company was in, it was an equitable powder company and was in operation by 1893, producing rifle and blasting powder. In 1898, Equitable expanded into small arms and um, ammunition. Equitable, or I'm sorry, um, I lost my place. Western Cartridge was instrumental in winning both World War I and World War II. In 1904, the Buell brothers started a plant, which is the Buell II plant. In September of 1893, Alton Junction voted to incorporate it renaming the village East Alton. In 1900, a fire started in Van Crater's store, spreading throughout the village and destroying most of the business district. There had been a flood and large pools of water was in the area. The residents used that water from the pools to extinguish the fire. Flooding has always been a problem, as we know. And in 1902, the Wood River flooded approximately 10,000 acres, again damaging downtown businesses, washing away farm businesses, and dumping over two feet of sand in downtown. So, uh, women were also um, important in uh, East Alton's growth. In 1906, Thomas and Elizabeth Van Prater established a general merchandising store with this Elizabeth being a common figure in the wagon peddling goods. Florence Day came to East Dalton after her husband's death in 1903. Mrs. Day was a teacher, later a principal until her retirement, and was responsible for starting the Parent Teachers Association, Mother's Club, and hot lunches in schools. Women managing, managed hotels, boarding houses, and ran shops. When I think about women in the pioneer days, I think of long dresses, taking care of the family. Not so with Ruth Baker. Ruth rode <coughs> untamed Broncos and Rama Girls. Alice Jove, daughter of C.B. Jove, went to Paris in the late 1880s, early 1890s. She studied art and traveled extensively, becoming a renowned artist. World War I became, uh, was a booming time for East Alton. H.J. Bowman, Jr. signed a contract with the French and the British government to provide forces for war. A stockyard was established on the Old Job Ranch with approximately 250,000 horses being shipped overseas. The uh, stockyard was located from Shamrock to Washington School to the Recreation Center on 3rd Street. The East Alton, as East Alton continued to grow, a library was established in 1935 on what is now East St. Louis Avenue. World War II caused additional growth. The Recreation Center was the headquarters for the troops guarding Winchester. Housing was built for families of people working at Winchester, what we refer to as the defense houses. After World War II, the headquarters was given to East Alton. To accommodate the children from the, uh, the growth of the village, Blair School was added on to, and in 1950, Eastwood, Niagara, and the junior high was built. 
Wilshire Village was the first shopping center. Quality Dairy was the first convenience store. And one summer, they kept track of the number of ice cream cones they sold per day, 650. <laughs> so in conclusion, I would like to um, say that we are eligible for four historical markers. The Milton Settlement, which is behind the Circle K on the Wood River, the Beeman Fort, the Driving Park, and the Wan Disaster. It is the History Committee's hope that eventually we will be able to purchase all four markers. And I also say, come over and see the museum. It is awesome. And our days are Thursday and Friday, 1 to 4, Saturday, 10 to 1.